All right, so in this video, I just wanted to quickly go over this indicator I made for thinkorswim that shows fair value gaps on multiple time frames. The reason I made this is just because I sometimes will lose track of higher time frame FVGs, especially if I'm focused on a lower time frame chart like a one minute or a five minute. And I just wanted an, uh, an easy way to be aware of these FVGs from different time frames all on one chart so that I don't have to constantly toggle between a bunch of different time frames throughout the day. I did make a video a while back that talks about how these zones can be really great for reversal entry, so it's definitely something I want to be aware of throughout the day. And um, lastly, but before we get into it, obviously FEGs are just one part of the story. They don't really mean anything without context and a higher time frame narrative of what you expect price to do. Um, I didn't really make this indicator as a means to guarantee profitable trades. I just built it so that I can stay aware of what's going on on the higher time frames. So going into how it works, um, it's built so that you can track up to three time frames at once. One of my favorite sets of time frames that I currently have on right now is a 15, a 10, and a 5 minute. So that means if we go to the chart here, all these um, kind of clouds or, or is what's being used are showing fair value gaps from those time frames. And if you look at the color scheme, which you can obviously customize and set so it's easier to recognize, um, the 15 minute is, let's move this over so you can see a little better, but 15 minute is green right here, aggregation one, right? So that's this for value gap right here, this one right here. Aggregation two is blue currently, and aggregation three is this magenta color. Um, and so that's how you can kind of tell apart the different time frames. I guess having one color, you won't really be able to do that as much, but it is a little easier to see where they overlap because it'll just be you know darker shades of one another, and you can kind of tell where multiple time frames are lining up. So going into how it works, uh, it's built so that you can currently track up to three time frames at once. Uh, currently I have on the 15 minute, the 10 minute, and the 5 minute, so it's going to show fair value gaps from all those time frames according to these different colors, matched with the, you know, aggregation 1 is the 15 minute, 2 is the 10 minute, and so on. It only tracks one bearish and one bullish FEG at a time, so uh, you're not going to see, you know, FEGs extended out in time until they get filled. It's, you know, once a new one is created, then they get overwritten um, and they could just kind of get cut short, which um, in my opinion just helps avoid clutter. I mean, if you if you had them stored for, you know, eternity up until they all get filled, then this chart would be extremely cluttered. And I, I really just think it'd be more of, um, you know, do more harm than good at that point. And so those are all the aggregations. Uh, real trading hours only, that's what this stands for. I currently have it set to yes, so that you know if we turn on uh, extended hours trading, just highlight those areas for uh, FEGs won't you know pop up in this area, and that's really just for honestly back testing. In, in my opinion, it, it helps because uh, I'm manually scrolling through charts a lot of times, and so I just want to if I'm scrolling through and I don't have these areas highlighted, then it just helps to see that you know the script isn't popping up, so that means I'm not in real trading hours. Um, and then lastly, you have this option to fill gaps right here. So it kind of works like if you've if you've seen the gap snake indicator on TrendSpider, it's just like if you have a gap and price starts to fill it, then the gap will you know kind of condense until it gets filled completely. And at that point, it'll go away entirely. Um, I usually have this off, so I'll show you what it looks like. This is with it on currently. So price is kind of going into these areas. It here's like where it started. Price went in, it took most of the fair value gap, but there's still some left. Um, and then it just gets overwritten to a new fair value gap down here. But if I turn this off, then it would just be like a full rectangle. So you can see the zone kind of persisting throughout time until it gets completely filled or overwritten. And that's how I, I normally like to see it. And probably the most important part of this indicator is the tolerance parameter. So what this does is it it's essentially the percent move from the beginning to an end of a fair value gap. So a few people have messaged me saying that some fair value gaps aren't showing up, and this is most likely why. Uh, so for example, if we take this down to zero, um, this will show every single fair value gap possible. But as a result, since it only shows one bearish and one bullish um, fair value gap at a time before it gets overwritten by a new one, it really doesn't prove to be much help. I mean, there's, there's fair value gaps everywhere, and it will show even the tiniest of ones because we set it to zero. Um, but by setting it to something like 0.1, th what this will do is um, it'll look for moves from fair value gaps where price is traveling more than 0.1%. And that'll always be the case. And so if we just 
take this off, put the label on. So there's a fair value gap showing up right here. The pink right here represents um, this five minute fair value gap. So the chart we're currently looking at. And since, you know, from this candle's low to this candle's high, the move is 0.17%. So that's greater than 0.1%. And so it'll be drawn. Now, same thing if we're looking at an example where it doesn't pr uh, show up, um, you can see that this one is only 0.09%. And so that's why it's not being drawn. This just really helps to you know, weed out the smaller time frame fair value gaps where it's not really significant enough. Um, you know, the, the whole point of fair value gaps, at least in my opinion, is to show where energetic price moves are, are coming from. And so if you're looking at, you know, every single fair value gap that shows up on the chart, you're never, you're just going to be distracted by a, a ton of different zones that really often don't have any relevance. And so it, it's, it's kind of more clear if we go down to something like, uh, let's do a three minute, two minute and a one minute and again set this to zero so one important thing to note about this script is that obviously it won't print fair value gaps on time frames lower than what your chart is set to and that's just simply like if this was a daily chart there's no way to see you know one minute fair value gaps within every daily bar it's just that's not how charts work so if you go down to the lowest aggregation that you have it set to then it'll show all the fair value gaps. So this being one example, we set the tolerance to zero. So every single fair value gap is showing from the one minute, the two minute, and the three minute time frames. Super cluttered, not, you know, it's it's kind of tough to decipher what's going on here, what, you know, what's reliable and what's not. Um, obviously you should, you know, keep an eye on market structure to be able to have some bias and, and be able to to know which fair value gaps you're looking for for potential entries, but if we set this to something like 0.1, then it's a little more clear. We, uh, you know, we have a, a couple good zones to work from throughout the day. Um, so this is a bullish fair value gap. These are bearish ones, and similarly here. And um, you know, I like to pick my colors so that I know when all of them are overlapping. I kind of this like deep purple color. I've kind of just trained my eyes to see at this point is where all three fair value gaps are overlapping, and so. You know, we have this nice kind of rejection of this zone right here on a one minute chart so that could be a good short signal but um for something like a like a one minute chart i often try to tone this down a little bit let me like um a 0.05 percent move is something i use a lot and that helps give you know some kind of just smaller zones uh, a little more often than if you were using 0.1 it kind of scales with what time frame you prefer like if you want to go to a 15 minute chart, again, all the aggregations are below the current time frame, so they're not going to show up. So let's make sure that the smallest one is set to 15. Next one, maybe an hour. Next one, maybe four hours. And we'll turn off real trading hours. And so this will show um, all fair value gaps on the 15 minute, one hour, and, and four hour charts when the threshold is above. 0.05. But since we're on higher time frames, this is really a kind of a small value, relatively speaking. So maybe we can put that to 0.1, see what that looks like. And, um, you know, it just offers some room to kind of play around and see, you know, what works for, for your chart. Um, still a 15 minute chart. I, don't, I probably wouldn't go too high here. Like this would probably be too much, 0.5%. Yeah, that's hardly anything is showing up. So. Um, this is probably better for something like a daily chart, which we can check out really quick. Um, let's do this. Can maybe set it to lowest time frame is one day because that's what our chart is. One week and one month. Let's see what that looks like. And so, yeah, it, I guess that just kind of shows that it works on all time frames and everything. But yeah, I hope that uh, was a sufficient demonstration. Uh, the link for the indicator is in the description. Um, if you want to use it, if you run into trouble, feel free to leave a comment or just shoot me a message on Twitter and I'll try to help you out. Most often it's going to come down to the tolerance, um, parameter. Just try to play with that and, and see if that works out. But, uh, but anyways, um, thanks again and, uh, I'll see you in the next one.